John, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Dan. Thrilled to be here. Really good. Tell us a little bit about the your background and what led you to to your your business and where it is now. It sounds like quite an interesting journey. Yeah, it's a kind of a following my interest, I think, is is how I ended up here. And maybe even, you know, my skills and what I think I'm I'm best at. I had a have a degree in applied physics from a local Australian university. I spent a career in quantitative trading of all things, working for banks and hedge funds and starting my own trading company, doing ultimately high frequency statistical arbitrage. And, you know, it was a terrific career. I, I, I love doing that. I love being on the, the cutting edge of, of finance and trading. And at, you know, at some point, 2008 now in the, in the height of the GFC we were, we were trading away in a typical kind of trading room with computer screens and 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 algorithms running working hard making buy and sell decisions and at, at the one end of the office we were doing you know pretty cutting edge stuff and at the other end we had a, we had some some weights in the in the trading room just to use when the markets were quiet just to have a bit of fun and, yeah. and be a bit competitive with each other. And that was the genesis of the idea for what Vitruvian is now, which is, you know, surely we can apply 21st century computing algorithms um, and technology to resistance training and make resistance training dynamic and adaptive and full of data. And yeah. surely that would be interesting and an engaging experience and there'd be a product in there somewhere that that I felt we could bring to the world. So that was, that was a long time ago now. Yeah. Okay. And, and it took a, at least a decade of me kind of watching what was going on in technology in, and fitness, try figuring out how to, how to, how to solve the problem from a, from a first principles physics point of view. And just getting on with the job and, and building machines and proofs of concepts and prototypes in my, in my shed yeah. actually over, over the course of a decade. And they, you know, the first ones were pretty bad and then they started getting better and better and better until I got to a point where I thought, well, actually this is, this is better than I thought it would be. There's, there's not just, there's a product in here. Yes. Yeah. You know, I can figure out how to make it, but there's a whole amount of, benefit to be to be having here over and above just standard resistance training here once it's dynamic and once it's electronic and once it's adaptive it just open, unlocks a whole new level of performance and uh, effectiveness in what can be achieved so that was very exciting and very kind of thrilling and uh, that's kind of what tipped me over to to founding the company and going full-time and and turning it into what it is now for the benefit of the uh, listeners do you just want to describe what what vitruvian does and what the machine sure the core of vitruvian technology is expressed in a, in a it's a platform it's about the size of a doormat slightly slightly longer uh, it's about 10 centimeters or what's that through four, four inches, inches high and inside that platform is is, is effectively a robot, which is two high power axes that put tension on two cables coming out of the, the bottom of the machine. And you either attach a bar to those cables and do traditional bar exercises like squats, deadlifts, and bench presses, yep. or you connect handles to it and do a whole range of other standard resistance training exercises. But the key being that underneath your feet is from zero to 200 kilos in a very convenient and efficient package. So yeah going heavy is key to being effective so for most people if you want to get a benefit in resistance training you need to be working at a, approaching your your limit yeah this is a very so sophi very sophisticated effective. weights bench if you want to look at it that yeah. way and if i want you, to put it in you, simple, you could call simple it, you terms could call it right? you, could, you could call it an entire gym and a personal trainer right, okay that's what we're looking uh, at in a small package that you yeah. you can put into your room and you can't even see when you're not using it. Yeah, right. So yeah, okay. That, that's that's a good description. So when did you start building it? 
Early prototypes. Um, early prototypes going back 2016 and before before that as well. I, am, I think I had my first fully functioning, I would say, proof of concept in 2016 after sort of six or eight years of, of trying to figure out how to actually do it and put it together. And then another couple of years of another two or three prototypes, which got better and better and better. And then the company was founded in late 2018. So that's nearly, well, that's almost exactly four years ago. Yeah. Okay. And you've since raised a company. substantial amount of money. Yeah. Over the, over the journey, over the four years, we've in four rounds or thereabouts, we've done, we've raised 35 million Australian dollars yeah. to commercialize the technology and bring in the most convenient, effective and efficient ways to train to the world. Yeah. Okay. See, I, I actually heard about this product as it was being developed, a very good friend of mine, Andrew Larson. Ah, uh, I know Andrew. Yeah. yeah. So, Here's my... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, in the early stages, I remember just catching up with Andrew from time to time and he'd say, you're in Perth, right? And he's yeah. like, there's this guy in Perth, he's making this thing. It's this, we think it's going to be like a weight bench and it can do all this crazy stuff. This must've been in the relatively early. And he was just like talking about that. Wow, this sounds amazing. And like, I'd see him yeah. again later on and be like, it's actually doing some really cool stuff. So I, I've yeah. indirectly been uh, getting. So you've seen us from you've seen us from the very early I, days. I've got, uh, I've got Larson Ventures was our first angel investor. Yeah, right. So, so. it's just really interesting to see the the progress and see the updates. It's like, oh, hang on, I I, was, I know this company. It's very interesting to see it because I remember the concept and thinking, wow, this is incredible. And how excited Andrew was about it, and, uh, and it's very cool to see it go the whole way through to to where it is today. So very cool yeah, story. I, I think Vitruvian is proof of that you can do whatever you want from wherever you want. Yeah. Really. Yeah, yeah. We are, we are taking on the world, uh, about as far away from where the rest of the world is as possible. Yeah. Um, we've built class leading, world leading technology to take on the likes of Peloton yep. from the West coast of Australia and we've done it. And, and how challenging has that been in, in terms of. Or is it an advantage in some ways, or is it is it is it something that you have to overcome? I mean, I I, I don't know. It's a, it's been about as close to as impossible without actually being impossible. Right. So not an advantage. Throw in throw in COVID there as well, yeah. and like how we got to where we are now, I just I almost can't even believe that we've done it. It's just been resilience and never ever ever giving up, uh, particularly through COVID because we couldn't leave. All of the capital that we raised was raised over the phone yeah. with people that I've never met and still haven't met. So that was hard. We built two generations of hardware, never actually going to the factory. So we did, we built hardware entirely remotely from here. So yeah, it's been hard, it's, it's uh, been challenging. but toughness, like, like adversity breeds is and it breeds good products i think yeah in, yeah at the end at the end of the day many most of our competitors have had 10x the amount of capital thrown at them yeah. to do to do their jobs and i think we're just here to prove that you need if you do what you can with what you've got you can do an awful yeah and like you said that resilience and even going through tough times makes you better prepared for that journey and to get through and if you can get through any of those times like COVID, you, you just in all the better stead for what comes next, right? Whatever that might be. Yeah. And in, in terms of, as you've gone through that process, what would you describe as your, your biggest strengths as you're now moving into, you know, from previous businesses in, in finance and as trading, yeah. and then to, you know, building a machine is still very different to now running that company. What, what's, what's your biggest strength as you've gone through that as you, like personally, um, as a, um, as a founder and now a business leader, I think it's, I spend the time to think through things. I spend a lot of time ruminating, thinking about and playing strategy out, playing, playing possibilities out, playing, you know, scenarios out. I spend a long, a lot of time doing that. I think it's one of the reasons why we are so well positioned now as a company is, is cause that's how I founded the company on, on a decade of thought really around what type of product would be an effective product, but not also that, 
what's a business worth doing in the first place? Yep. You know, it, how do you build a protectable business? How do you build a business that can grow and, and, and flourish? And what type of product architecture do you need to make that work? All of the, all of what makes Vitruvian great where we are now is, is based on kind of a decade of thinking through what it takes to work and what it takes to succeed. And I, I apply the same mindset to where we are now. And I think that'll see us through into the future. And, and in terms of the, the business itself, it's obviously it's, it's hardware or the machine and it's software. Is, is that the case? I assume it is. Correct. You have to, if you want to do these businesses properly, they're, they're brilliant businesses. If you can, if you can execute them properly, yeah. but you have to do, you have to do a lot you have to do yeah. hardware, firmware, software, content, community, and you have to do them all. You have to do them all well. You don't have to do them all perfectly all at the same time, mm -hmm. but you have, you have to, you have to do all of those things. It's not just hardware. So yeah, that's part of the reason I, I started the company in the first place because I wanted to challenge and it's no point in just doing something that's easy. A simple software I, company I think, is, is, would, be, would be too simple. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I, I just think as a mindset, if you want to found a company, do the hard thing. Yep. Like if it looks hard, do that. Don't do the easy thing because if it's easy for you, it's going to be easy for everyone else. Mm -hmm. It's not very protectable and not very, not a great business. Do something that is difficult. And never ever ever give up and you'll succeed and you'll be protectable you'll build a protectable valuable enterprise yeah and do you see that starting to come through more and more as things progress with your business but as also competitors and i say competitors because i don't necessarily know who your competitors are but if you think of things like which are different but like a peloton and some of those other companies that have mm. different issues evolving do, do you see that come through now is that you you're building that whether it's IP or a moat around the business and things that are harder for other people to replicate. Do, do you see that evolving now? Yeah, I, I personally think we are the best positioned company in this space right now. And yes, I see that coming to fruition right now. Yeah, okay. Because if you take a high level view of the industry, there's, there's a few large players, Peloton being the largest, yeah. you know, Tonal is our, our, our nearest yep. direct competitor with, with a wall mounted system. And then there's a, there's a suite of other players around that size and there's a bunch of smaller entrants, but if you look really closely, you won't find a more efficient company and product architecture, really ready to poised to bring this to the world. And we believe we're sailing into a 10 million machine opportunity here. Yeah, okay. It's a very, very big opportunity. It's a global opportunity. And we have the product architecture to address this need. And we're the only company right now in the world yeah. who in this position. We know how to make it, build it, ship it, deliver it, sell it, service it, and grow the community. Yeah, okay. And we're doing it right now. And we have a product that people want and they're prepared to pay for. Yeah. And that market is in the millions. Yeah. And here we are. Yeah. Okay. And, and you've got the strengths of being of your personal strengths, building this business now, right? Over a long period of time. What about weaknesses? What, what, what would you say is your biggest weakness as you, which tell us, tell us about that. Yeah. Oh, I'm just a bag of weaknesses, mate. That's all I am. <laughs> <laughs> like, like maybe knowing that is is it's part of the part of the process is, is might might be my only strength really. I've got, <laughs> you know, I've got you've got I've got a bunch of employees who will, will be happy to tell you all, all about my weaknesses. <laughs> how, how do you overcome those as things? well from a, from a from a leadership point of view, from a business point of view? Obviously, there's set things that you're really good at, right, to get the business to where it is. But there's there's got to be things where you, you're not as good at that particular thing. And, and how do you overcome that? Do you bring in people? Or do you learn to get better at it? Or how, how do you how do you do that to to get to that that point, especially in a business as complex as yours, right? Because like we we're just talking about, it's not a software business or just a, a hardware business. So you, you've got to have multiple different types of businesses and do them all really well to succeed. Yeah, exactly right. Like I'm just one person, and I'm actually a tiny part of the company now. Like 
it relies on very, very good people across the company working hard, taking initiative, being empowered to solve problems where they are in, in the business. So I think that's ultimately how I deal with my weaknesses is have great people who can do what I can't. There's, there's so many people that are just way better at, yeah. um, you know, building hard with me and there's, there's way better engineers than me. There's way better people doing customer service. There's, there's way better strategic people than me. There's, you know, so I just, I'm the dummy now. Did that, did that, <laughs> <the company. laughs> did that come naturally to you though, as you, as you got to that next stage? Cause presumably when you're building the prototypes and, you know, very closely involved in every aspect of it, of it being built, presumably in the early stages, does it, is it tough to sort of let go of aspects of that as you go to each new stage? Well, I think my, everyone faces it. If you're going to grow a company, you, at every point you're going to be faced with uh, having to let go and having, having to maybe admit that you're not, you're not yep. the best person to be doing this, this function of the business and maybe let go. And, and I end up doing currently in the functions in the business, not because I'm great at them just because we don't have anyone else to do them. And I, I just end up in my bucket. But yeah, I think, I think that's, that's the answer. You, yep. uh, at, at, at every point, at every decision-making point, you have to be deliberate, I think, and you have to be honest enough with yourself to say that you're not the best person to do something. But you also have to be like the positive mindset, at least for me, is to say, well, if someone turns up and they're great at something and they want to do that for the company, well, I should just be thrilled about that. Yeah. Like I shouldn't be threatened. I shouldn't be defensive about that. If, if, if someone comes up to do something better than me, well, great. Come and do it. Yep. That's fantastic. <laughs> How many people in the business now, John? Oh, about 30. Yeah. Okay. Across various functions and depending on where you stop counting from part-timers yeah. and contractors yeah. and whatever, yeah. but about them. So that's a good size team. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, with that size, with that, you know, there's teams within that, within that group of people and it's about the right to be, you can be really effective with, with that type of number of, of people anymore and you start, it starts getting complex and you have to start putting management structures, but yeah. I think this is about right. Which will come in due for course, now. no doubt. Yeah. Yeah. For now. Yep. What, what about decisions you've made along the way? Is there anything that stands out as, you know, amongst the best sorts of decisions you've made or something you've got right that you're really glad you did a certain way as you've gone through that journey? Yes. And I think a mindset is what building a particular type of business is a decision to be a, a deliberate decision to build a particular type of business, yeah. which is, which is a business that is not, which, which is a, a business that builds options into that business. So it isn't fundamentally, I guess I come from a trading background. I used to trade options for a living. Yeah. What I've, what I've been striving to do with the Trivian over four years is, is keep our options open, is build a product and a technology architecture that gives the business options in how to play and how to grow depending on market conditions and depending on opportunities and sort of serendipitous yep. things that happen along the journey of the company. So for example, the product architecture is what it is. It's a platform, you know, the core, the core product is a platform that you stick on the floor and you can try and it's, it's, it's broadly speaking there to address the at home training. Yep. But it was deliberately designed to also be able to play equally effectively in a gym or in a studio setting or a group exercise setting or a rehab setting. Okay. And right now those options have become very, very valuable to the company because Right when consumer consumer sentiment is challenged in this potentially inflationary and, yep. and a recessionary environment, it's not necessarily the best time in the world to be doing, like in the next 12, 12 to 18 months to be doing 
consumer hardware and consumer brand. But because the business is, is optioned and we have options, we can we can very effectively develop other business lines around B two B and different different use cases. So, yeah. so I think that's my, that's my answer to your question. That's the the, the thing I'm I'm happiest about is is holding firm to building an option with option, building a business with options rather than a yeah rather than a, a single plan which. If we had a single plan, we'd have, we'd have driven into a wall. Yeah, okay. Because you've got diversification of customers there, right? So when, like you're saying, yeah. if consumers, looks like it might be a bit of a tricky time. You've got a whole range of other business type customers or whatever it might yeah. be and vice versa, right? Down the track, it could be the other way. And and that yeah. gives you a diversification of customers and income. And from a business value point of view, if your business has more than one option, an option has value mm. in and of itself. Yep. You might not have to do anything about it, but it, it's it, it's some sort of nascent value just in having the option to be able to do something. And it's exciting to be able to get the business to where it is now and see some of those options actually the, the value starting to materialize and crystallize. That's good. What what about biggest challenges you've faced along the way? No doubt there's been many, but is there anything that stands out as particularly difficult a challenge? I would say the single largest challenge that the business has faced in its four-year history has been just one word, COVID. Right. COVID was, the company was founded before COVID, mm -hmm. but how that global pandemic skewed supply chains, how it skewed demand, how it skewed capital was impossible to plan for yeah and you know i was surprised left right and center about what actually happened so i mean who knew that there'd be some amazing demand for the particular microcontrollers that we have on our product so that we just couldn't find them yeah for okay. love nor money yep couldn't plan for that so again an option a business that is full of options is a good business to have when when a global pandemic lands because that's kind of what's pulled us through. Yeah, okay. And that's the single biggest biggest challenge we've faced. And having feeling like we've almost got through COVID, there are still some lingering effects of it. Yeah, feeling like we've almost in, in got a, through from a supply survived. chain perspective, is that what you're talking about in terms of lingering effects? Yeah, supply chains are starting to normalize. Shipping costs are starting to come like like international freight is starting to come back down to some sort of normalized level. Yeah. Capital is normalizing again. So yeah. Yeah. Feels like feels like we're getting through it. And what about the best advice you were ever given as you started the business? I mean, were you always going to go into business, John? Was it was you know, you started in finance. What was business always an yeah. entrepreneurship? Was that always something that was where you were going to end up or was it something else? Yeah, I think so personally for me. Like I'm I'm completely unemployable now. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't worked for anyone for for I don't know nearly 20 years yeah right and uh, well, like once you make that step it's hard to go back yeah but i think i always, i think i probably always was i think i was probably destined to want to, to yeah found something do something difficult do something challenging do something that i, that I thought was valuable and meaningful and i've just been just thrilled with the privilege to get to do that. I mean, most, a lot of people might want that. I think they want that, I think they want the freedom, but it's really an enormous privilege to that events in your life make it possible. And I feel a very privileged human being to, to get to do, to have a vision of the world and a vision of the future and get to do something about that. Yeah. With, with my own company is 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 a privilege that's not lost on me yeah that's very cool well, and what about advice that you've been given is there anything along the way that anyone's sort of said to you that was a game changer for you or made you sort of stop in the tracks and sort of think about things differently or just good old common sense yeah yeah i think one of my i think i've shared this before before on previous podcasts one of my 
one of my mentors when I was a, a trader, wise old American trader. I, I asked him one day, well, you know, sort of almost philosophically, how do you make money? Like, like this is, that was our job. We were sitting around trying to, trying to make money. I said, Rich, how do you, how do you, can you make money doing this? And he goes, well, you put yourself in a position to make money. <laughs> that was his, that was was his advice. <laughs> <laughs> that was his answer. And I was like, that's either the dumbest thing ever. Or the most or profound. Or the smartest thing that anyone's, yeah, or the most profound. That, and I, I guess I've taken his advice ever since that that you know it's almost it is almost a philosophical philosophical statement where you don't actually know what's going to happen mm. but you put yourself in a position where if something does go well you're able to capitalize on it yeah. and i think you'll see that if you look really closely at the truth don't really know in all honesty you don't actually know what sort of course the business is going to take you don't know what course history is going to take you don't know what course competitors are going to take but if you put yourself in a position you build a company that's positioned well to take advantage of of a particular scenario then that's the best you can hope for yeah and yeah so there's my my best yeah no, uh, best advice that i've ever heard and what about advice to anyone who's starting a business what would you what would you say to them or even what would you say to yourself if you could go back to when you were starting, what advice would you give? I think it comes down to know yourself before you do, before you do it, before you start it. Yeah. Know why you're doing it. Know what you know what you're capable of. Know what your family's capable of. Yeah, and check that you're doing it for the right reasons. Yeah. Because there's a whole bunch of reasons that just will not last. Like if you're doing it for economic freedom, yep. you that'll probably fail. If you're doing it to make a fortune, that probably won't work. If you do it for a whole bunch of sort of vainglorious reasons, I probably would stop. But if you're doing it because you're compelled to, if you, if it's who you and you've got something to offer the world, then go for it and. Don't just just go for it, and you know you should have gone for it a year ago. Yeah, I'd definitely encourage people to to know themselves first, and because entrepreneurship, it's just the toughest gig yeah. in commerce. It's it's the you have to be you have to be resilient. You have to be smart. You have to be hardworking. There's no you can't hide. There's no room for laziness. There's no you have to be brutally honest with yourself because people are going to be brutally honest with you. There's n there, it is. You, yeah, it, it sounds nowhere to people romanticize the whole idea of entrepreneurship, right? And it, yeah. in many respects, it is because so many people aspire to it. But the reality is just it's a real tough grind, right? Yeah. It's a lot You've of hard to, work. Yeah. But for me, I get to do what I wanted to do, what I set out to do every day. Yeah. Like when I founded Vitruvian, I wanted something very difficult very challenging, something huge, something that I could spend the rest of my life on. And I wanted it to be difficult and challenging and and to be to be a test of, of what I felt I was possible. Sort of like a life a life's work if you if you like. That type yeah. of thing, right? Where yeah. you're creating and something from scratch. Does it look like or is it starting to look like what you imagined it would when you started? Yeah, in terms of the machine, in terms of the business. Yeah, like if I go back to what I, you know, the the flash of lightning you know, I think I had in twenty sixteen of of um, you know, a piece of hardware that's convenient and effective mm -hmm. that connects you wherever you are to your favorite coach or influencer or around the world through the system. It's it's kind of taking shape. It really is. Yeah, so well, that's good. That, it's that, actually that's, surprising how how much it is, how close it is to what was what was envisaged. To what you envisaged in, in twenty sixteen. Yeah, that's mm. pretty cool, right? To see that come through that process, mm. and then actually go, okay, it's getting to what I what I saw. Yeah, yeah. 
before I go in the next final four questions, which are sort of like rapid fire questions, but what do you what do you look at when when you see that vision of the next? You know, you've been going now for sort of six years in terms of when you started, and what down the track, what does the business look like? What what do you, in terms of the product? How how does how do you think it looks, or is it just scale from here? The Trivian is is growing into being a fitness technology company more broadly than just a single product right. and, a, and a product architecture. So if I if I sort of gaze into the next year or two, it's seeing the the current technology take its place in the world mm -hmm. and, and and get rolled out into the world because we believe we have the fundamental uh, product architecture to bring convenient, effective, and efficient ways to train yep. to the world. But more broadly than that, we want to be deploying technology everywhere that lets people train efficiently and effectively and conveniently. So yep. it'll always be with hardware. It'll always have a hardware component to it mm -hmm. because that's it currently the only way to do effective resistance training is with, with hardware. But the ways it gets deployed in gyms and in traditional gym equipment, the way it gets deployed in rehab settings, in hospital settings, the way it gets deployed in I know, sports teams, professional teams and, and amateur teams. It's, we just have a long way to go and, and an exciting path to, to watch the technology, watch technology more broadly improve human performance that's that's yeah. kind of the high level exciting thing that we'll be doing five or ten years down down the track yeah especially when i guess you go down to more that customizable type space for specific sports or use cases or whatever it might be i can imagine that as as things progress that you can be quite granular in terms of how you you're able to tweak the system yes yeah, there's certainly machines you know on the at least on the sketchbook which are just single yeah single modality or single movement things for real sports specific um specific other rehabilitation or 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 performance enhancing i think i think of cricket for example as a as kind of waiting to be you know for a full technology deployment of how we can train a bowler's movement through a full range of motion and through a full arc of bowling to to do you know concentric and eccentric loading to really develop a bowler's strength and performance and make the bowl faster. Poor old batsman. Yeah, well, make a bowl we'll do the same faster. With batsman as well. But but all, all, you'll also end up extending and putting longevity into their careers because a lot of the bowlers end up with back problems and that type of things, especially the quicks, because of some of those issues, just wear and tear. Sure, but I'm I'm sure a lot of it can be prevented by the right sort of programs around training and that sort of thing. So I imagine there's actually quite a lot of scope for that. Yeah. Yeah. That's, and that's just like a nice little sideline. Yeah, I yeah. think will happen through the course of businesses is making athletes perform better Yeah, and yeah, hopefully perform longer and hopefully perform with less injury. Yeah. Okay. So four final quick questions. Who is a business person that inspires you? the most and why or if there's a couple business person i quite like elon musk i think yep. he's kind of a cool guy he's like yeah i like the fact that he's he speaks his mind he feels free to free to do that he's a bit polarizing yes he seems to be a little bit nuts at times but yeah i, I think name an entrepreneur that isn't yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i think I, I think i think he's he's someone i admire yeah okay never met him would like to yeah yeah He's incredible as a as someone who executes better than anybody you mm. can ever imagine in terms of the way he goes about implementing, creating multi-billion dollar businesses, not just once, but multiple yeah. times and simultaneously. You know, it, it's, yeah. it's quite incredible, his ability to do that. I think I'd also admire his conviction and his, his concentration on, on like he didn't, he didn't make, make a bunch of money and then just build a diverse portfolio of, mm. like, you know, tech stocks or go into investing he, yeah. he doubled down yeah. and built other great businesses and also you know hopefully we can get some vitruvians on his space shuttles and on be, his spaceship yeah that would be pretty 
and train the athletes, train the astronauts, astronauts. they go to Mars. Mm. What about best business books you've ever read? I don't think I've ever read one. Oh, really? That's a good answer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. I hope you don't like, yeah. No, no. Well, this is the thing. So, I don't have so, time to read, like, to be honest. So you've never read any sort of business book? Where did you get your inspiration from when you were younger? Did you ever look at other, like, biographies of of entrepreneurs or business people or anything along those lines? Or is it just you, you're motivated by what you're motivated by? Yeah, not really. Like, I don't think I've ever read a business book. Never. <laughs> like, apart from, like, I went and did, did an MBA. Yeah. Read stuff around that. Yeah. Oh. You probably had to read a couple yeah, of so Blue Ocean Blue Ocean Strategy and a couple of John yeah. Potter books if you did that, I guess. But uh, that doesn't necessarily mean they're the favourites. <laughs> yeah. So sorry. I don't, yeah. Just whatever I learned in the business. Like, the business degree was, was quite beneficial. I still refer to things that, that I learned back there. But no, no particular link, right? You prefer to learn by doing. Authors. Yeah. Like, I honestly, like I do read a lot. Like it's not like I, yeah. I don't know how to read. But I just... But it tends to be like, oh, just what's going on in the industry, a lot of just constant email chains. And yeah. by the time I've you know read 12 hours of emails, I don't really have time to sit down and read a, yes. a business book. That's fair enough. What about any quotes on business or life or leadership, anything like that, or anyone that, anything like along those lines that struck a chord with you over time? Well, the one I shared earlier of, you know, Put yourself in a position to make money that's that's something that that's probably the most profound thing that i've that i've ever heard that i yeah that i i tell myself and i listen to myself say every day yeah okay yeah so that would nothing, be it. <laughs> nothing you know really amazing quotes that i that i live by what about what about the business and what comes next in the next sort of 10 years and beyond what what's next for the business you obviously raised like you said 35 million what what's in store for the future i'd like to think the tribune will be a public company in the next i don't know three to five years time you can't really preempt these things you can't really you kind of have to ride ride the waves of yep. the capital markets a little bit i think that's plan a because i think in that setting We'll be able to fully achieve our mission of, of bringing the world's best ways to train to the world. We might get, we might, we might not get there. We might get acquired along the way. We might get. So I, I'm, I'm not like that. That path is not set in stone. Yeah. But I think that's that's the three or five year plan, and we'll we'll see if someone tells us we can't do that and, and they have to buy us and then further than that you know i see a world where five to ten years time millions of products like using vitruvian technology will be, be deployed around the world in homes in gyms in studios in yep. rehab settings in sports teams so i just think that the, that the technology is so good and the benefits are so profound and the time saving and the, the efficiencies to your workout are, are so impressive. Yeah. And the additional benefits that you can wrap around it once it's once it's digital around community and accountability and reporting. I just think that that value proposition and that it's so large that we are, we will see, you know, in the many, many millions of machines and products that have the trivian style technology and then deploy it around the world yeah well it's an exciting machine and i've really enjoyed learning about your story and the story of the company and seeing it develop over the years like i said I, i've been behind the scenes hearing little updates along the way so it's been great to yeah. see how it's all progressed so congratulations on everything you've achieved to date and uh, best of luck in the future yeah thanks so much Dion. thanks for having me on the call thanks yeah. for listening to me rattle away no fantastic always I, I, I never need any encouragement to talk about Trivian and talk about this space. It's, a, it's an honor. It was great to have you on the show. To be able to present with you. Thanks, John. All right. Thanks so much. Cheers, mate. Bye-bye. All right.